The Old Testament reading this morning is taken from Isaiah chapter 40. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she is received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry. And I said, what shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades when the breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Go up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good news. Lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those who are with young. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Rejoice greatly, O daughters of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Hold your king. Righteous and holy salvation. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless him. The epistle reading today is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that was given in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him in all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, pray the way of the Lord, make his path straight. According to St. Mark, the 10th or the 11th chapter. Now, when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethany, to Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village in front of you. And immediately as you enter it, you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and will send it back immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at a door outside in the street. And they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said. And they let him go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, 
and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that had been cut from the trees of the field. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest. This is the gospel of our Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text for today is about the kingdom of heaven. Now, Matthew tells it by that because of his Jewish training, the word or name of God is not, not pronounced, even in the uh, Old Testament uh, Bible, it is not, not pronounced. It's written in uh, the Hebrew, Y-H-W-H, and we think it's Yahweh because we hear things like Alleluia, as in Yahweh, so that that means Lord save, by the way. That's not just a, something to sing out, but it means Lord save now. And that's what the people were singing. And this text that we had, the Old Testament text, uh, New Testament text, all about Jesus coming. And we know he came. We have the historical records that show that he came and what he did and how he proclaimed the kingdom of God. But what is the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven? Quite frankly, it's a reign and rule of Jesus Christ. Actually, God's reign, the Father's reign through the Son. The reigning of Jesus Christ is not a place so much as something being done. Something being done in your hearts and minds. Something being done on this earth. Now, I can't be re helped but reminded by my little small brain that we use the word sivayoth. And what reminds me is a constant battling that's been going on both in Ukraine and now also in Gaza and also in Syria and Iraq and just about any place you want to point. God, Sivayoth, means Lord of Armies. He is the God that has the power and the dominion he is the creator that is responsible for all that we have. And he created everything through his son. We're told that specifically, all things were created through him and not one thing was created that was created that wasn't created by him. That's a pretty powerful statement. And so we look at the the war, and what, of course, the newspapers are flashing in there is all about the, all the children being killed. They fail to say that the children are the human shields, that the people of Palestine are responsible, actually, because they're the ones that put Hamas in power. And Hamas, you're right, they are a terrorist organization. And they took that power also. And we see that effort by mankind trying to take power. And God laughs at them. He will use what's going on for his purpose. We may not know what it means. And we suffer as we empathize, empathy, have empathy for the Palestinians that are in that disaster also have empathy for the Israelis that have 
gone through that disaster, who are the victims of the terrorists and continue to be victimized because they push back. Everybody in this conflict is going to have their hands dirty. Everybody is going to point at everybody else. Nobody takes responsibility for how it started and how it needs to stop. God takes responsibility. And he sends Jesus, his son. Now, in our reading today, it talked about mountains being lowered and valleys being brought up. I don't think that's a discussion of construction going on. But that's metaphorically getting our souls and our world and our environment ready for the king to come. And we know that he came. And the, the grace and love in which he administered to people as he tried to get them to understand that he was, in fact, God, the Son of God, the only begotten Son of God, and that there are no others, and that he's the only answer to all that is going on. Now, the Jews initially had the law given to them by Moses, which was given to Moses by God. And if they kept the law, we would not have these problems today. If we kept the law, we probably wouldn't have many problems today either, but we don't keep it. We keep injecting things into it. We continue to want to do it our way. And so we go against God's law. We don't care about other people. In fact, other people can make us very angry. But that doesn't do any good. Anger only tells you something's wrong. All right, now, you Christians, fix it. That's really the answer. We have to deal with the problem. No matter how much we dislike dealing with it, we have to deal with it. But the kingdom of God is in you when God is working through you. But when you're working against his will, you're not in his kingdom. You're in the enemy's kingdom. And we need to remember that as we live our lives out, trusting and following what God has taught us. Is that war that we have going on today a just war? There's too much sin involved in that to call it just. But you're responsible for protecting your own. And the only way to, to get rid of evil is to overcome it. But the only way that you're going to get overcome it in the end is through love and forgiveness. That's why Jesus came. That's why he came and he died on the cross. That's where you hear, Lord, save, and he did it. Hosanna in the highest. The kingdom of God has come. And now you live in and out of that kingdom. He's called you to be his own. And you fight it. Because you're simultaneously saints and sinners. But God is faithful and just. And he forgives our sins. And he cleanses all our iniquity. And he makes us spotless in front of him. He gives us eternal life because of what Christ has done for us. Not because of your good works. But your good works done in his kingdom are counted, accounted to you for special honor. So it's not like you don't get something out of doing good works. The problem is, where is the motivation? Because God looks at the heart. If the motivation is for political control, that doesn't do any good. If the motivation is love for your neighbor and caring for your neighbor, 
and caring for your own. Yeah, you know, that's what God has commanded. You know, God hasn't changed. He has simply given us a way to be saved because of his mercy, because of his great love, is what we call grace. Grace is a free, unmerited love of God. That means you don't earn it. You are forgiven. Now, because you're forgiven, you have the ability to love God in return. That's living in his kingdom. That's why you do things that are right, because they're right, not because you feel good about them. But because you know that's what you're supposed to do. The reign of heaven is standing near. You know that. Christ announced it. John the Baptist announced it. As we see the wars and rumors of wars, as we move in the end of time, we know that the reign of God stands near. That he will return. And that return will be soon. Now, I know that Christians have been saying that for about 2,000 years. So when soon? Well, for everyone who dies, that's pretty soon. All right? For everybody who lives until Christ does, in fact, return, sing hallelujah, praise the Lord. He's given you time. He's given you opportunity, and he made it possible for you to do his works and work in his kingdom. You know, when you look at the scriptures, they talk about you being slaves. That means you're owned. Who better to be owned by than God Almighty, the maker and creator of heaven and earth? Think about it a minute. If you're not owned by him, who are you owned by? You are not your own. So celebrate what Christ has done for you. Celebrate the fact that he came. That's what Christmas is all about. That's why we have the Christmas tree up. Why we have the candles burning. Because we celebrate his, the fact that he did come. That he did keep all of God the Father's promises for our salvation. That he has done everything that he was was proclaimed in the book concerning him. Now, why is that important? Because it shows us by historical fact that God keeps his word. He can't break his word. He said that. Not one little bit of it can fall out. So you trust his word. And when his word says you're forgiven and you feel really, really bad because you know that what you did and what you're involved in and what you're thinking is wrong. Know also that you are forgiven because you realize that. No, not the cause of your being forgiven. But you're forgiven allows you to understand that that's why Jesus came and died for you. You can't make up for that. You can't add to that at all. The only thing you can do is glory in it. Announce it. Proclaim it. Live it. Jesus loves you. He forgives you. He died so that God the Father can forgive you. And you can stand holy in his sight that you might have eternal life instead of the death and destruction which we see every day around us. You know, our society has been going for a long time and it goes through its ups and downs and it has its reformations at times. But we're coming to an end. 
we have the opportunity to proclaim God's love and forgiveness. We have the opportunity to live in his grace, to experience the life that he has given us to its fullest, and yet proclaim, Lord, I'm a poor, miserable sinner. And God, who says that he will forgive you, forgives you. So eternal life is a done deal as long as Christ is your Lord and Savior. Now, if you swap him out for any old idol, now you got a problem. But there is where God is faithful and just too, because he keeps pulling you back, keeps correcting you, keeps giving you another chance. But that's going to run out. Just as Christ's life came to an end here on this earth when he died on the cross, it was only through his great power that he is raised to newness of life. And it's that same power that raised you and me to newness of life because of God's mercy and grace to human beings. So what should we do? What can we do? We live in his kingdom. We proclaim his glory. We live not as people who are just trying to get from day to day to day, although sometimes it may feel like it. But we are moving towards the end where God is coming. And there we lift up our heads and look with great anticipation for all that's to come because we know he keeps his word. So continue to trust God's word and live in his kingdom that has no end. Amen. The peace of God with paths of all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in true faith into life everlasting. Let us depart in his peace. Amen. is taken to support the ministry here at St. John's throughout the world and here in Salt Lake. You are encouraged to participate in that by your contributions. <laughs>